B.V. Jagadish, a managing partner for Kaj Ventures. Uh, Kaj Ventures is a venture fund that he's built. Uh, he's been the founder and CTO of Exodus Communications. He is the one who introduced the concept of internet data centers. He started a business that sold to Citrix for $325 million. He's an investor and active board member at Cloud Velocity, Scale Art, Nutanix, Ponomine, and Houdini in the U.S. He signed software and rocket technologies in India. He's also a mentor at IM Bangalore and IM Ahmedabad. And now he's spending a lot of his time doing philanthropic work. Ladies and gentlemen, B.V. Jagdish. Hi, I'm B.V. Jagdish. Watch me on Yo! India TV. everyone we have the famous serial entrepreneur of the bay area mr bv jagdish right here at an apio fundraiser in a san ramon park welcome sir to you india Thank tv you much, with me just lean kanuja and you know this is a beautiful weather it's a beautiful event it's a philanthropic cause and you are associated with not just one but many other non profit organizations and i think now you are spending around 40% of your time towards great causes that these non profits uh, are doing so tell us a little more about it first of all i'm very fortunate to be in that position and this is something that most of us as you know in america you call that as uh, financial independence right once you get that financial independence either you can just go be uh, golfing every day or you can be on the beach every day or whatever you want to do but we chose the path that let's continue to spend 60% of our time in uh, helping the next generation of entrepreneurs to help build great companies and slowly start inducting these entrepreneurs to whom wealth is being created into areas where they can also contribute towards social causes and especially when they see people like us uh, contributing and working very closely with nonprofits a lot of these people actually feel more confident to be associated with non-profit organizations so that's what i'm doing right now right so you are on the board of akshay patra which is uh, probably the largest organization in india that is feeding the uh, students uh, of um, underprivileged families uh, you are also on the board of shankara cancer hospital uh, which um, contributes to um, the patients who are underprivileged right. and right. a lot of uh, free help is extended and then one school at a time the osat which is also pretty popular in bay area as right. well right. and and many more so tell us a little more about all of these um, uh, organizations and your contribution yeah absolutely you know coming from a village uh, I'm, i come from this village called bagalur which is about 30 40 miles from bangalore and when i grew up that was like a real village there was only one bus that used to come in the morning and then go back in the evening and uh, coming from a village and with an economy that is purely dependent only on rainwater the challenges of the villagers are enormous and in a place like that education is obviously a secondary or a tertiary kind of thing because you have to feed the family and you have to have two meals on every day that itself is a major hurdle and because of that parents normally don't pay much attention to education they try to pull them out of school put them into agriculture put them into some other task that helps them or family to earn the money and i was very fortunate coming from a very educated family my parents gave utmost attention for all of us to get the education so we ended up going into the government schools in the village itself up to 7th standard but then past 7th standard they put us into the city and through a lot of hardship you know the high school college and all those things we came up but the point i'm trying to make here is that in rural parts and in underprivileged societies whatever we can do to help these rural children to stay in schools so that if we can create more gems from these rural parts of india i think we would be doing wonders 
to this world. So that's the reason as to why I'm so excited. So if you look at Akshay Patra, Akshay Patra is essentially serving at the grassroots level. Essentially, children who cannot even afford to have a good meal, those are the children who come to these government schools. Because people with money, they'll all go to private schools. But daily, daily wage workers, uh, agriculturists, family, children, uh, bus drivers, children, you know, those are the kind of children who come to government schools. And if we can give them one good meal, that's the attraction for the child to actually come to school. And I've seen this personally myself. And that's how you get the kid into the school. And then the school provides the education. And then hopefully the ch child will start to realize and hopefully the parents will also start to realize the importance of the education. And that way more and more children will come. So that's at the basic level. And one school at a time is where again the government school buildings a lot of them are falling apart and if the infrastructure is not good parents don't feel comfortable sending their children to these schools so this is where we intervene and then we go and completely rebuild these schools or we completely uplift these schools so that we provide a safe environment for children to attend the schools. And uh, the other one that we do is uh, uh, my own engineering college. Once again, that's a government engineering college where the fees is very, very small. And that also attracts a lot of underprivileged students. And engineering degree is like the last phase before you pull that kid and the entire family out of the poverty cycle. And I have seen this personally myself. So we give scholarships to about 250 students and you can actually see uh, in the final year of their engineering when they have got job offers none of their families would have actually seen anything like that so when when these children get an offer like 50,000 rupees or 60,000 rupees a month nobody in their family would have seen a salary something similar to that and this is the first phase of how you eliminate or you pull people out of the poverty cycle. And same with Shankara Cancer Hospital as well. This is actually one of our favorite. I mean, this doctor is truly a divine doctor. This is at a time when hospitals have turned themselves into businesses and there's no humanitarian at all in most cases. Here is a doctor and a group of doctors at Shankara Cancer Hospital, where, as you know, cancer is a very expensive proposition. So not everybody can afford to get the cancer treatment and cancer doesn't look at okay you are a rich man you I need to come to you you are a poor person I don't need to everybody gets cancer so at Shankara Cancer Hospital uh, about 10 to 20 percent of the people who are underprivileged they are given 100 percent free treatment so we help raise money for Shankara Cancer Hospital as well that is great you know you can associate yourself with these causes because you have come from a village and you have come to this level so you are now you know worthy of helping other people but it's not very easy you know as you yourself mentioned there are several hardships enormous challenges and people who are poor who have not seen money and uh, who cannot afford quality education and um, quality life. Uh, it's very hard for them to break the boundaries and uh, uh, get to d a different height. And especially in US, you are a serial entrepreneur, so I'm sure you had a lot of ideas that you have implemented throughout the journey of your life. Uh, but tell us a little more about getting all this transformation into your life and living through it, you know, what were the pains, what were the joys, how was the overall experience? Yeah, it's a, it, life is always an up and ups and downs, but every time when you go through those things, it's sort of like what people say, right? Connecting the dots. Every part of the experience that you go through in your life, that becomes a learning experience. I'll just give a simple example. Like when uh, we moved from the village into the city, just my older brother and myself, we just had a room for ourselves and we used to cook our food at a very young age. I was only 10 years at that time and my brother was probably 13 or 14 or something like that. And we used to cook our food. And my job was every day morning, my brother used to give me uh, 25 paise. And my job has to go and negotiate 
to get one vegetable and one curry leaf and one lemon for that 25 paise, no matter what. So I had to go negotiate to get all these three items every day. And that is what we used to use to do the cooking for that day. And, you know, looking back, right, that's a phenomenal experience. I, I could have treated that as, man, you know, wh why am I going through this? Especially when you are like 10 years, because if, if we visualize ourselves, I don't think we'll ever send our 10 year old child to go live independently and not just independently under somebody else's care, just by yourself, right? Cooking your own food, you know, nobody would actually even imagine. But going through that phase of life, it was tough at the time when we were going through, but I think that's what prepares you for a world that is a lot more complex. And I'm sure a lot of them have different stories, but uh, the philosophy that I've always followed, which uh, has worked for me, and, and I'm pretty sure it works for a lot of people, is this formula of CPS. C is consistency, P is perseverance, and S is self-driven, right? Whatever you do, you have to be consistent. You cannot just do it one day and then think that, oh, you know, this didn't happen to me next day. No, I mean, if you, if you want to lose weight, you go to a gym, do you just go to your gym like three or four days and expect you to lose the weight? No, it's not going to happen. You have to do this consistently, right? Same with perseverance. As you go through ups and downs, you cannot just give away, uh, give up on things and run away from problems. You have to be persistent enough, right? And self-driven. Nobody should be telling you to do things. You should do it on your own because you are passionate about it. Whatever you are passionate, whatever you are excited about, that's what you should be doing. That's when the self-driven attitude actually comes. And I think if you look at most successful people, these three in some form or the other, there'll be commonality, right? And if, if uh, people can adapt similar kind of their own principles, I think that'll help them to come out and do more wonders to this world. Absolutely. You know, success doesn't have any formula, but whatever you said are really some elements that are key success factors. So I really appreciate you sharing them and motivating people uh, to, you know, follow them, uh, follow them with all that, uh, you know, determination so that uh, they can achieve success. Yeah. But during your journey, you know, as a successful entrepreneur, uh, there were there would have been a lot of learning experiences from pitfalls or some things you would have uh, thought that maybe if I would have gone back in the past, I, I could have changed this. And I think that's a learning experience that viewers can benefit from. So mm -hmm. please talk a little more about that. I think uh, in every step, especially when you're uh, and when you are an entrepreneur, um, the team that you are building is such a critical aspect of it. So many times what happens is we are on the run. We need to fill up the position as quickly as possible. And during that process, you end up making compromises. And I think the number one thing that when you are doing any entrepreneurial kind of or company building, right, as you are hiring people, take the time in hiring the people. Because you don't want to hire someone, there's no fit, and then you end up firing that person, right? Either because of qualifications or the person is not a fit for your values and your culture. So you have to be looking for people who blend into you, both from chemistry and values point of view, as well as from your needs point of view. Right. So, so we made a lot of mistakes because, as I said, we were like on the run and we want to fill up the position and end up hiring wrong people. And that sometimes you actually end up taking two steps backward, right? While making one step forward, you end up making two steps backward. So my recommendation is make sure hire the right people who fit into your own chemistry as well as your own needs. Wonderful. So as an entrepreneur, what were the areas of specialization and how did you get those great ideas and how did you feel that confidence? Yes, I can go for it. Well, I think that's why the experience matters 
and when someone like me i worked in the industry for about 13 years before wow. i started my company mm -hmm. so when you work for that long in a very focused enterprise only i did not switch between uh, um enterprise to consumer or even within the enterprise i did not switch you know bit too much into like going into entertainment or healthcare or into finance and all that i focused on it and it related activities and when you focus like that in any vertical area then you start finding after 6 or 7 years you start finding gaps that exist in the market and that's what leads to the new ideas of solving the next set of problems and that's exactly what happens that's exactly how entrepreneurs come up with brand new ideas because they understand the entire picture 360 degree view of what's going on and within that what the gaps are and do you have the expertise to go and address that that's exactly how most of these companies are born and then getting the right vcs you know getting the right funding and you know continuously marketing it you, you know selling the idea telling it great and letting others judge you whether it is really yeah. promising or not you know it is sometimes painful what yeah, do you absolutely. say about that no you you are asking me all the questions that i teach in a class i actually teach a class wow tell us tell us about your class as well <laughs> <laughs> i teach a class uh, called the entrepreneurship um Zero to twenty million dollars. Building a startup company, zero to twenty million dollars. Where I basically cover, mm -hmm. if you have an idea, mm -hmm. right? Where does it take from that idea mm -hmm. into building this into a company mm -hmm. to to generate like ten to twenty million dollars of business? Because that is the hardest part of building a company. Mm -hmm. Because once you get to that stage, then it's all about scaling, right? Then you are, you have different set of problems. Mm -hmm. But zero to twenty is the hardest part, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I mean I was again fortunate that uh, I got invited to speak as a guest speaker at uh, Wharton University University of Michigan mm -hmm. and bunch of other places mm -hmm. and then some professor at Santa Clara University you know he recognized this and he said hmm why don't you come and teach for our students mm -hmm. so that's how I ended up creating like a two unit course and I end up teaching in uh, Santa Clara University now I teach in several of the Indian universities as well yeah And how do people reach you and attend your training? So through Santa Clara University it's publicized over there and through IITs it's publicized and then over here uh, we have a incubator called FalconX mm -hmm. in uh, Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and then through FalconX we conduct these courses in fact last year during the covid times twice we did a virtual course and the beauty of the virtual course was we actually had Uh, attendees from not just silicon valley silicon valley new york uh, delhi uh, hyderabad bangalore madras bombay uh, you know we had so many people from all over the world so we picked a time that's kind of convenient for various time zones and we ran these classes wonderful so you are educating people you know across the geographical areas you know and uh, people of all levels uh, colleges to you know grown ups you know and everyone needs mentoring when it comes Correct. to entrepreneurship absolutely. so who better than vivi jagdish yeah. absolutely <laughs> uh, and any pitch for your own businesses well i think uh, my own business there is nothing like my own business i have invested in about 12 companies in uh, silicon valley and i have about three companies in india the company called biofi uh, which i'm just putting that as one of the most important ones because it's actually solving a very critical problem of uh, measuring the sugar level in a non invasive mode meaning without piercing a uh, hole into your skin mm -hmm. you can just use like an oximeter and using uh, light rays mm -hmm. it has the ability to detect the sugar level in your body mm -hmm. and we believe that the world which has almost 200 300 million sugar patients mm -hmm. this would help enable them to monitor the sugar level on a regular basis mm -hmm. and moment you start monitoring then you can start applying the fixes very quickly if you don't monitor you don't know what's going on in your body mm -hmm. so if you monitor especially with this you can monitor any number of times right you get up in the morning you can look at your sugar level you eat your breakfast you can look at your sugar level before and then you 
you have your before lunch you can measure or any time of the day you can measure and it the data is stored and the doctor also gets to see all this data mm -hmm. so that's a very revolutionary product and um, this is a cutting edge technology and hopefully in the next 3 to 6 months or so we should see this product alive yeah but when you make these kind of revolutionary products these innovative products all these need uh, some uh, um, you know affirmation or approval from different boards like uh, american medical association or you know in india if you are selling them then uh, the indian medical board or uh, you know associations like that so how do you take care of the compliance factors well, we have to uh, absolutely that's a very very important question so in fact we are already working with uh, very well known sugar doctors mm -hmm. uh, in uh, bangalore mm -hmm. and we will do this trial for about 10000 patients mm -hmm. using the regular equipment mm -hmm. and then this equipment mm -hmm. right this is a very tiny equipment mm -hmm. and these doctors would actually help us out because this is in the best interest of the society mm -hmm. these doctors are going to help us to measure with the real equipment and our equipment and then they tell us the difference mm -hmm. so that means when you do for about 10000 patients we should know how accurate we are yeah so that's a good first step and once we do that then you get the compliance in india and then once we um, start marketing this product to the indian patients then it starts to become much easier to start expanding and even to get approval within the us as well becomes a lot easier that's great so you have clinical trials uh, underway and that will help you to prove your point correct. and the, uh, the sanity of the product yeah, the sanity uh, yeah. of the product exactly wonderful uh, so what's the final message to the viewers you know you are a dynamic personality you have uh, multifaceted roles and you have spanned across you know different areas including non profits and, and very commercial businesses of your own you know with innovative ideas so with with all this unique uh, skill set and diverse background what's what is something uh, that viewers can take away i think the the important aspect in life is to create some sort of a balance between making money versus giving back money so if we can create that balance and those who are already involved in non profits go deeper into getting involved with non profits those who are not involved try to get involved initially you know pick one or two non profits where you like the founders where you like the cause the passion that these founders have and try to slowly get involved and one thing i can tell you from my own experience is these non profits will number one help introduce you to some amazing set of people mm -hmm. people who are thinking very differently mm -hmm. than just making money 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 all the time right mm -hmm. so that's point number one Point number two is because of this, you are now exposed and uh, go to places that you would have never ever gone. Mm -hmm. You would have never gone in your life. And I'll tell you one incident. So we had um, built a school in a very rural part of uh, Karnataka, mm -hmm. and I had gone for the inauguration, and this uh, minister who was sitting right next to me. Mm -hmm. So this minister was asking me. before the speech started so he was just asking so where are you from so i told him i gave my background i gave all the other volunteers background and all that so he said do you have any land in this village in in this area I said no we don't have any land in this do you have any relatives in this place mm -hmm. no we don't have any relatives do have any friends in this place we don't have <laughs> we don't know anybody <laughs> really you don't know anybody and still you guys have come here and you have built the school so then his chance came to get up and speak and i was wondering what he was going to talk about right and you know he said which actually was very touching he said you know none of us have seen who god is or where god is or whether really god exists or not but let me tell you one thing these guys have no affiliation this to this place right they have no relatives no land no nothing and from nowhere these guys have come and they have built this amazing school for the benefit of these village students to us these are the gods yeah <laughs> so that godliness is there in all of us we just need to bring it out and this doesn't mean you have to give money only right it is combination of money your time your experience 
anything that you can do to help make the society better i think you will have a much better sleep that night absolutely what a wonderful message and i hope uh, you will learn a lot of things and uh, you can also join his classes i think that is uh, an inspiration and a wonderful thing to do absolutely. for all of you uh, take the benefit of great personalities we have in the bay area like uh, bv jagdish uh, and hope may you use those lessons and uh, Uh, when you see bv jagdish as your role model then uh, you also go higher up in your uh, um, hierarchy of life and uh, the satisfaction you generate out of uh, your life and soul thank you sir thank for you. speaking with your india thank tv thank you very much really appreciate having me here hi i'm uh, bv jagdish i'm from the bay area i've been an entrepreneur uh, for the last uh, 25 years i came to this country back in 1982 it's been an absolutely exciting ride being here and uh, i work with several non-profit organizations that help give back to the community in one form or the other organizations like akshay patra which provide 1.8 million midday meals shankara cancer hospital which provides uh, cancer treatment to the underprivileged and um, one school at a time osat which where we go and build rural schools and uh, uvc foundation where we give scholarships to about 250 engineering students every year so please come and join any of these causes or any of the causes that you like and i think you will really enjoy your life very well thank you